Welcome to this lecture series, Industrial Design Sketching with Paintstorm Studio. I will break this down into three modules. Module one, how to adjust the interface so it fits our needs as industrial designers. Module two, how to create the different brushes so they simulate more our real world tools such as uh, like graphite pen, colored pencil, Kugelschreiber, um, marker, Sharpie and such. And then in part three, I will show you how you can use all the different digital tools to effectively approach the digital rendering of your sketches. So let's get started with the interface. First, I will reset the complete interface, reset to all. And that's actually what you see. And there are a lot of different tabs we first actually don't need. So for example, this one we don't need, the navigator we don't need, the mixer, which is kind of like a mixing palette, pretty amazing. You can use different tools to mix this stuff, is more something for painters, less for us, so we don't need it at the moment. Color swatches, we have the ability to add some uh, custom swatches here later, but we will use most of the time three, four colors, and we will work with the, the copy colors. So we can actually put these color swatches rather than on the sketch paper and sample it. And so that's the reason why we don't necessarily need it and yeah, can save a little bit of screen space. The color mixer, Maybe for some gray tones or black and white we can keep or in case you don't want to work with the copy colors. So let's keep it for the moment. Okay, so let's explain a little bit more the interface, how it works. You see we can minimize all these different tabs and they're currently docked. To undock you can drag it out and to dock it back or add it, see you can just drag it out, add it to there. The width can be adjusted. Or even here we can completely undock it. Good. This one maybe we can add to there. There you see it. And then you can browse through it. Well this has to be a tick bigger. We can also switch between uh, this view and this view. So here you have uh, brightness, darkness, color saturation and the hue tone. If we go to this one, kind of like have something similar. So the saturation and darkness, and then here you have no saturation and brightness. Interestingly here, we can also clip, for example, the color range that can be used. Just in case you ask yourself what that's useful for, you see now what's white uh, so it was brighter right now inside that left square is now mapped to the complete area so you have a, an easier way to pick than those fine color tones not a bad idea well, most times i just work with with this one even here you see we can turn uh, this on by dragging this line and to turn this completely off click just on that and then we have rgb and HVS for with the different sliders if you want to work that way. Here we have foreground and background color. Okay, no, no, um, not very complicated. Pretty much the same as with all other elements. Then we have layers and brushes and we have the brush setting. This is actually the one we will work a lot with because this one has all the different functions for the how to customize your different brushes. So because this one is very big, I actually started to simply work this way. So the layers I keep there because I don't need them very often. Sometimes I might need the color and often I switch between brushes and then the brush settings. So I dock them actually at the upper part on my screen. Main reason is now I have a really wide drawing area. The complete interface can be customized. So what that means is you see here there's a small gearbox. When we click it we get this menu. Ignore tab. That means if we 
activate it, and let's go out, and then we press tab, we hide the complete interface. But because this ta uh, tab ignores the tab key or the switch to hide the interface, it remains quite useful. For example, if let's say we do this as well, and you have your your most needed tools and you can focus more on, on drawing. To turn this off, we simply turn this off. Okay, so opacity means, well, obviously we can change the opacity and then scale and adjust the scale of the that interface element. And then we also have normal opacity and normal scale on selected. So what does that mean? So let's say I turn this one down and go to there. And you see actually when my mouse moves over it, it actually becomes more opaque. Currently it's very transparent. And we can even do the same with the scale. You see then it animates it. It's very minimized and then it gets rather big. It's trans uh, opaque. I can do all my settings. And then if I move my mouse away, it gets smaller. It's up to you which one you like to work uh, with. I personally prefer at the moment simply to minimize it than actually waiting all the time for the animation part. Let's reset this and there, and this should be there. Okay, good. So that was number one, how you could do it. And you see, you have these functions actually in a lot of different UI elements. Well, we also have a global scale. So if you go to File and then Options, here is our global scale. And you see we can scale everything up or down. So very useful. Specifically, if you want to uh, maximize the screen real estate and uh, don't lose too much of your canvas being blocked by, by the panels. The layers are honestly very, very easy to work with. So they can actually maintain a rather smaller scale because honestly, very often we do, we just add some layers and then we just switch between the layers or maybe uh, click and drag a layer, uh, maybe adjust an opacity or so. So the interface can rather be small. Colors is also okay, you know, is this big enough? Brushes, it's all also okay. But here with the brush settings, maybe there we would like to have a little bit uh, more of a scale. So let's maybe make this bigger. Uh, so like this, maybe. Huh? Okay, and you see that. Now this one I overwrote because it doesn't have the, the global scale. And then we can go ahead and rearrange them a little bit. Okay, perfect. In this tool shelf here, we have most of the common tools to move something around. Crop, we have the uh, box and circular selection, you see that up here, you can switch between the different types. And also you can switch to uh, additive or subtractive. So it means if I do a selection and then there's this negative, see, I, I cut this one out, plus I add something to it. And maybe I would like to ignore or delete the selection, I can click on this one. So you see a lot of these tools, when I click them, they actually have then options in here. Plus there's your uh, undo and redo button. When you, we go into the painting mode, we also then get access to, uh, for example, the mirroring, uh, one point perspective, and then ruler ellipse, two point and three point perspective tools. I will go more into detail with them later. In the main menu here, we have the, the most common uh, tools, new, open, save as, the options, edit, copy and paste, and free transform. Kind of like if you have a selection, you want to move it around, rotate it, or distort it, 
we have some basic color adjustments and uh, image and canvas resize um, functions, layers. But most of the layers functions, for example, we have also up here. So I don't necessarily need to go to there. There's an invert selection. Here with view, there you can see your different um, yeah, panels. And we also have different workspaces. So it's actually pretty nice. You can have different configurations of an interface. And then others, there we have about enable guides and uh, those basically turns the guide system on and then snap guides. So when you draw along uh, a guide, it snaps the line to it, reset the interface to default, load and save custom UI. And then click on, you can click on save custom UI, give it a name and then save it. This actually can be shared among different computers or if you, if you have an iPad and a Mac, uh, then you can have the same interface actually on each device. To customize the hotkeys, that will be the next logical step. You go to File and Define Hotkeys. And this is a little bit too small to show, so let me increase for that purpose the scale so it's bigger on the screen there. So here we have different folders where you have your various functions. In other, we have the toggle mirror on, uh, snap to guides, uh, fast disable brush control, um, uh, toggle guides, free transformation, redo and undo. And inside layers, uh, typical layer commands and uh, canvas. Here, for example, we have fit to screen. That's mapped to the home button. Now, if you're right-handed, your left hand is on the keyboard, kind of like on the left side. The home button, however, most times is on the right side of the keyboard, so it's a little bit far away. So now you have to, to think about how maybe you would like to set up all your different key commands. So rotate canvas currently is space and alt. So if I press space and alt, you can see I can rotate my, my canvas. Okay. And then maybe reset canvas angle. So how could I do this? So this is alt and space. Maybe then I make this one double click and it's red. Control, alt and space. So try to pick something that is very similar. So it makes sense. Otherwise you are uh, kind of like having to memorize too many different key combinations. Try to make them very, very similar. Okay, then with shift spacebar, you can see actually we can zoom in to the complete uh, drawing, which is really nice. When I go even closer, so very far zoomed in and press shift spacebar. You see it just then shows you the whole object or well, the whole canvas and then if I release it I'm back to my previous zoom level. It's actually really nice. If I would like to fit for example the whole canvas into my my screen uh, here we have fit to normal scale so maybe I don't know shift spacebar Let's say shift control spacebar. There. Shift control spacebar. Ding. Zoom in. Shift control spacebar. There. Alt control. Uh, alt spacebar rotate. Control alt spacebar reset. Okay. Brushes, uh, let's see if uh, one is very important here for us at the moment. Uh, we have the shift with the eraser, uh, sorry, a straight line tool. And let's rather go to the canvas part. So really important is, for example, the, the brush uh, resized by drag. So this is currently set to Alt Command. 
So with with Alt Command, and if I have actually a brush selected, you see that you will see the ring and a number. And then if I click and drag left and right, I can adjust the size of my brush actually. And then there are all the different other tools you uh, uh, you can use. You have um, a normal eyedropper and you have a very fast color picker. So the, the difference between that is one is actually a tool. So to demonstrate this a little bit better, let me put some colors down. So you see I'm in brush and if I then go into the eyedropper, I switch to a different tool. I also can uh, have some options here. Now I can pick the red, I can pick the blue or the green. Okay, and then to paint, I have to go back to this one. But when I press Alt, you see I switch instantly to the eyedropper. But when I release the Alt key, I'm still inside my um, paintbrush. So you say blue, green, red. Very easy. So it's uh, very nice. That's the main reason why, for example, I, I made a, um, the comment that later the few colors we use, we can put some very basic color tones down. And then whenever we sketch, we can quickly go sample the color there and there and continue drawing. Instead of always going to the swatches, open them, select the color, go back. I feel this is actually, sounds maybe a little bit old school, but um, I think workflow-wise, it works a little bit quicker. Okay, so this is set to Alt, and then you can uh, think about if you want to keep it. But just be careful, um, that's the Alt key, because it, it can happen that by accident you click it, and then you click on the white page, and then you sample the white color. Okay, I will stop it here, because you can then decide on your own um, which keys you would like to use for the different commands. You see here the move canvas is also for space bars or praise bar and I can move around. The mouse wheel can zoom in and out. And I think, oh, at least for me, those are the most common commands I use. Uh, maybe T for transformation. So let's go to Let's see what this actually was. Was it on layers? Uh, there was somewhere the free transformation there. So maybe I make this one T. So every time when I press T, then I can uh, turn on the transformation. G is under my index finger. So that's very easy to, to switch. So try to find keys that all like fit into the Q, W, E, R, T, A, S, D, F, G uh, section. And because we're not really typing text, we're just calling commands. Now just use simple letters, no complicated combinations. It, it will be easier on your hand and easier also for your mind. So this then basically concludes part one, how to configure the interface and how to create your own hotkeys for Paintstorm Studio.